Hi there and welcome to this special edition of In The Labs With Me, Becky. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to create these super cool push along dinosaur toys. So in terms of some of the features we're looking at in this video, we're going to be looking at two sided machining. So where we're going to machine one side of the dinosaur and machine on the other side of the dinosaur as well. We're also going to look at the moulding toolpath, so we're going to create a nice soft edge on either side of the profiles of those dinosaurs just to give it a nice curved finish so it's safe for little hands. We've got wheels that are attached to a dowling that goes through the legs of the dinosaur to act as an axle in order for those wheels to turn around. And so let's go into the software and we'll take a look at the design in there. Okay, so I use VCarve to draw up the design. So we've got a job space of 22 and 3 quarters by 21 inches with a thickness of 1.57. So we're working with quite thick material here. I've drew up three different dinosaurs uh, and for the dinosaurs themselves I used a polyline tool to create the shapes. They've each got a little eye and a little smile on one of those. Uh, and then in terms of the circles, we've got a series of wheels here, dowel positions, that sort of thing. I used a draw circle tool. So the idea is we're going to have a hole through each dinosaur's leg and that's going to enable us to slot in a dowling which is going to attach to two wheels and so each dinosaur will have four wheels in total. We're working in a two-sided job so it's going to be machined in a two-sided operation uh, and so you can see I've copied those vectors to the other side there and that's pretty much it. So Let's go over to the toolpaths tab and we'll talk about what we're going to do in terms of toolpath in this. So we'll switch over here. Okay, so starting on the top side, um, we've got a VCarve toolpath to begin with. So if we just double click on that, uh, we can take a look. We can see it's the eyes and the smile. We're just using a 90 degree V bit just to carve in there. And then if we go ahead and preview our toolpath, we'll just tile our windows. We'll preview this one. You can see how that looks. Okay. Then we've got a molding toolpath and the molding toolpath I've put in for the outside of our dinosaurs. And the reason for that is because I am working with quite hard material. And so I really wanted to soften the edges of the dinosaur so it wasn't so sharp or harsh for little hands. And so if you are cutting into softer materials such as um, something like pine, um, you probably won't need to put in a molding toolpath just to kind of soften that edge because the material is so soft that you could easily kind of sand in um, and sand away at those harsh corners. But if not, then you're welcome to use the swept profile. So here, if we just double click in there to see what we've got here. Okay, so we're using these dinosaurs as our profiles and as, as our actual shapes to follow around. And then we've got this vector here that represents the actual profile. So this profile is essentially being swept around the outside of each one of those dinosaurs. And so if we go ahead and preview that, we can see the result of that. Okay, and we are using a tapered ball nose to cut that out and you can see it's created a nice soft edge around those dinosaurs, which is going to be perfect, um, especially in our hard material. Okay, up next we're now switching tools. So we're going on to the uh, quarter inch tool. Mine's actually just a, a little shy of that, it's 0.245. Uh, and we're going to use this tool for the rest of the tool pass for this side. So here we've got a pocket for our dowels. So this is where we're going to measure our dowels um, circumference and ensure that our vectors match up to that. And we're simply just cutting in there at 0.8 of an inch and if we just go ahead and preview that that's what that looks like and then at this point we test that our dowels fit in there uh, if they don't we'd probably just look at adding in an allowance so we'd, in, we'd put in a negative value in there just to offset that out just to make those holes a little bit bigger until your dowels actually fit in so you want a nice snug fit here so you don't you do not want it loose because we need it 
tight so that the dowel can go in so that then when we flip the material over it's going to locate into the corresponding holes on the actual material and I'll come back to that in a moment so we want a nice snug fit so that it can't move okay so once we've tested that we can then move on and machine um, the pocket out for the wheels now for the wheels on the top side what I've done is I've what I want to do is I actually want to uh, machine away quite a bit of material because I don't want our wheels to be the same thickness as our dinosaurs um, otherwise it's going to be very bulky so I'm just machining away half of the material here so if we just jump in there you can see I've got a cut depth of 0.785 which is half of the material thickness that I'm using I've also got a pocket allowance in there and that's just going to overcut past the actual outline of our wheel and this will make more sense when we come to flip the material over and actually cut out those uh, wheels using the profile toolpath. So if we go ahead and just preview that toolpath, take a look at how that looks. Okay, so you can see that there. I'm actually going to switch on the visibility and just switch on the solid frame. And you can see this vector is the boundary that we're cutting in between, but with that offset, we're actually cutting past that. And we can see that marked in that colored area there. Uh, and that's going to help us create the cutout when we come to flip the material over shortly. Okay, so we'll just uncheck the visibility of that one. We've got pocket holes for our dowels. So if we just press F on the keyboard. So we've got our dowel holes for the actual dinosaur. Now this is based on a piece of doweling that I'm going to use that's going to act as an axle for the wheels in order for them to spin around. So in this case, um, Ideally you want to do test cuts and I've already done my test cuts uh, and so I've gone for a pocket allowance of negative 0.005 so a little bit of an allowance so it should be uh, loose enough that an, a dowling can actually spin inside of the actual holes and that's exactly what we want in order for our wheels to turn. So we've gone with that uh, allowance there and so if we go ahead and preview that we can take a look at what that looks like. Again, we are just cutting halfway through the material because we're going to do the same cuts but on the other side. So I'm just kind of meeting halfway here. Okay, and then we've got a pocket hole for dowel in the wheel. So we've got the holes in the center of each one of those wheels here. And if we double click in there, what I've got is um, a much smaller allowance here because I want the dowel to be quite tight and snug to uh, the wheel so it can act as a kind of stop so it's not going to be so the dowel isn't going to be spinning around inside of the wheel otherwise the wheels aren't going to move okay so i've got a much tighter allowance there we're setting our start depth to 0 0.785 because that's how far we've already cut away in those pockets so then we're going to uh, cut further 0.3 into those wheels for our dowel to sit inside there and then the dowel is going to feed through the holes of the legs and then out onto the other side for the other wheel okay so we'll close out there and then we'll just go ahead and we'll preview that and that's what that looks like and then we've got a profile cut out so here you can see the outlines what which ones we're using there we've got tabs in place to hold our parts together we're only cutting halfway through our material we're machining on the outside we've got those tabs in there which you can edit the thickness or the length of those uh, and that's pretty much that and if we go ahead and preview that that's what that looks like so Again, uh, we're actually just uh, machining halfway through and then at this stage we can then go ahead and take this material off of our machine and then in theory when we switch over to the bottom side in terms of our actual design file, what we can then do is go ahead and take these copies of those dowel positions and we're actually going to machine those into our spoil board. And because our dowel positions are in kind of asymmetric fashion, there's only going to be one way for our material to match up to those dowel positions using our dowel pins uh, to locate each one of those holes. Um, and that should marry up perfectly. 
Right then, so we're gonna machine the dowels into the, the dowel holes into the spoil board. So again, let's just preview what that looks like. So that's what it's gonna look like in our spoil board. And then we're going to take our material that we've already cut into, we're going to flip it in this direction, and then we're going to then locate those dowel positions, lock that into place, and then secure it further by adding the screws into the material just to secure the material to the board and then once we've done that we can resume where we go on to machine the, the other elements on the other side so pretty much the same we've got a sweat profile here so for the other side of the dinosaurs and then we've got a v-carve tool path again for the face, the eyes. We've also got some detail on the other side of the wheels as well. We've got pockets for the dowels in the dino's legs, and then we've got the profile cutouts. And if we go ahead and preview that, you should see that we're actually cutting all the way out into our material. And you can see that we've cut through there. And that's what we'd expect to see when we come to machine that. So with that, let's just take our files over into the labs. So there we have it. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing how these dinosaurs came to life and I hope that it inspires you to share some kindness this Christmas by making your own version of one of these dino push toys. So thank you so much for watching and happy making.